life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are things that are promised by the U.S. Constitution and are protected by the U.S. government. However, would you believe me if I say that the U.S. government have willingly taken away the lives, liberties, and the ability to pursue happiness from some of the same citizens they were sworn to protect? Well, it doesn't matter whether you believe me or not, because it's true. For the most part, what America has been protected since its existence is the status quo of racism, white dominance, and capitalism. So in this video, we'll take a look at the government sanctioned program, Cointel Pro, in order to examine just how far the FBI went in their pursuit to disrupt, misdirect, and discredit the civil rights movement in order to protect white exceptionalism. Before I start, let me explain what is white exceptionalism. So basically, it is the idea that white people could do no wrong and that they are the standard of this world, especially white Americans. And this idea was shown in full display in the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. They attacked it because they didn't get what they want and they were mad because they believed the election was stolen from them. And they also saw that it was within their right to do whatever they want because this land belongs to them. The government is meant to protect them. So all in all, they could do no no wrong and they see no wrong within their actions but if others try to infringe in their rights then it means that is an attack on them and american values and no one else in their opinion has the right to have the same values as them because america belongs to them and they are the best of this world so let's begin in the 1960s, the lines between illegal intelligence, law enforcement, and military practices became blurred as Americans wanting to make America a better place for all were targeted and attacked for political beliefs and political behavior, aka wanting to change the system America had already established. So under the cloak of the Cold War, military intelligence that was meant to be used against other countries was used for domestic purposes to conduct surveillance on civil rights, social equity, anti-war, and other the activists. As a result, Corntel Pro, an acronym for counterintelligence program, was created and conducted by the FBI to suppress domestic political dissent through an array of illegal activities. The attendant effects of the FBI's Corntel Pro was to expose, disrupt, misdirect, or otherwise neutralize groups that the FBI officials believed were disruptive. They instructed FBI field operatives to create a negative public image for target groups through surveilling activists and then release releasing negative personal information to the public, break down internal organizations by creating conflicts, and having agents worsen racial tensions or send anonymous letters to try to create conflicts, create dissension between groups by spreading rumors that other groups are stealing money, restrict access to public resources by pressuring nonprofit organizations to cut off funding or material support, restrict the ability to organize protests through agents promoting violence against police during planning in that protest. Protests. And finally, restrict the ability of individuals to participate in group activities by character assassinations, false arrests, and surveillance. Furthermore, they had several methods to gain these effects, which included infiltration, psychological warfare, harassment via the legal system, illegal force, and undermining public opinion. With infiltration, agents and informants were to spy on political activists. They were also tasked to discredit, disrupt, and negatively redirect action. Additionally, with the use of psychological warfare, they planted false media stories and published bogus flyers and other publications in the name of targeted groups. They spread misinformation about meetings and events, set up fake movement groups run by government agents, and manipulated or bullied parents, employers, landlords, school officials, and others to cause trouble for activists. Furthermore, they will use harassment via the legal system to make activists look like criminals. Officers would give false testimonies and present a made-up evidence as reason for false arrest and wrongful imprisonment. They also use illegal force to conduct illegal break-ins in order to search activists' homes and to commit vandalism, assaults, beatings, and assassinations. Their objective was to frighten or eliminate activists and disrupt their movements. Not to mention, the FBI main method was to undermine public opinion of the activists. They challenged the group's reputation and the community and denied them a platform to gain legitimacy. 
Furthermore, the FBI created and controlled negative media meant to undermine black power organizations. For instance, they oversaw the creation of documentaries skillfully edited to paint the Black Panthers as aggressive, and false newspapers were created to spread misinformation about party members. So all in all, the ability of the FBI to create distrust within and between revolutionary organizations tainted their public image and weakened chances at unity and public support. For example, they lost a campaign against Fred Hampton, the young leader of Chicago's Black Panther Party, to alienate him from the Mau Mau's, Young Lords, Young Patriots, and SDS to stop his attempts to create a rainbow coalition. After months of official harassment, he was shot and killed in his bed while his pregnant wife slept next to him after a paid informant slipped drugs in his drink. He was only 21 years old. Likewise, they targeted Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. because the FBI believed that he could become a messiah who could unify black nationalists. King was subjected to various kinds of FBI surveillance that produced alleged evidence of cheating. And on November 1964, a package that contained a letter and a tape recording allegedly of King's cheating was delivered to him and his wife Coretta. He understood the letter as advocating that he commit suicide. Ultimately, Cointel Pro was brought to public attention after an anonymous group of activists broke into the FBI office in Medea, Pennsylvania on March 1971. They stole more than 1,000 FBI documents that revealed years of systematic wiretapping, infiltration, and media manipulation designed to suppress dissent. With researching Quarantel Pro, I understand just how far the government went in order to bring down people that doesn't think the same as them, that doesn't believe in the American system that supports white nationalism and white exceptionalism. Corntel Pro has ended. By the same time, I believe that it has evolved into something else. The FBI still has the capabilities to discredit the leaders in the present. And what they did was so effective because after the civil rights movement, I felt like they was avoiding black leadership. Why? Because they kill most of the black leaders. And you start to think, what can you really do against a system that is so strong? That is so ingrained in every level. And it just made it hard for us to unify. Because once we do unify, they have the playbook ready. Like Corntel Pro, they have the plays ready to attack. We're like an underdog going against the big dog. They already know what to do because this system been built. And we're just trying to even fight to even unify as black people, as minorities. And as soon as we do, they pick you out and they easily know how to break you apart because it's a whole playbook. I just told you the, their playbook and how to infiltrate, to create dissent and disrupt. They have the media. They have all the power. They have the political system to arrest you and to discredit you because you see it. As soon as someone tries to make change, they bring back your history. They create lies about you to make it think that you're a bad person. Even a group, a simple slogan as Black Lives Matter been turned into something that's close to KKK. So all in all, all I could say just to inform yourself on the methods of how they create dissent, distrust, and disrupt our movements so that when we do and if we do try to come together, we can know what's coming. If you have any ideas, just or any opinion, just comment down below. Just make sure to like, subscribe, and check for my next video because I'll go deeper into this and go into the case study of Fred Hampton just so that we can understand and try to understand how we could come together to beat this shit.